Hey guys, it's your girl here, the one that started it all, and I have a, another movie review. This movie was requested, and uh, this person has requested me to watch movies beforehand. Uh, this is Panette Chidari. Panette, how are you doing? And they had requested that I watch a movie called October. Now, October is... A movie basically it's a symbolic um, it has a symbolic feeling towards how life is short and that sometimes we don't know how much of an impact our presence has on someone else um, at the same time not only is life too short but like you could be on top of the world and all of a sudden something happens and it changes everything um, Basically, uh, this movie has, you know, ba this movie is basically more like, you know, uh, it basically focuses on the unconventionalness and unconditional uh, love and things like that. At the same time, it's, it's important that not only do you take care of yourself, but also be mindful of who, you, you know, who you are around. Um. Because you never know you, despite, you know, your flaws and you being you, you could have a bit of an impact with someone else. You know, that's why it's you know important that, you know, we watch what we're doing and be mindful what we do. And also, you know, enjoy life, you know, and live it. You know, life is way too short. And that's what this movie was about. Basically, this movie... So the premise of this movie is that, you know, a young man by the name of Danish or Dan, he goes by Dan, you know, he is completely different from all his other co-workers. Um, he doesn't really get along with his co-workers very well, like in the sense of he doesn't have a relationship with them, except for two of his friends who happen to work as interns in the same hotel that he works at. Um, he's very irresponsible and doesn't seem to take his job seriously. You know, he is the polar opposite of a girl named, I had to write her name down, Siuli, or Shiuli, S-H-I-U-L-I. I know I put her name, sorry guys. Um, but she is completely different. Uh, she takes her job seriously. She has a good relationship with her fellow co-workers. You know, she is responsible, you know, a complete polar opposite from Dan. And uh, you would think that, you know, you're, you're, at first you think, oh, this is going to be a romance movie, things like that. No, it's far from it. Uh, she usually ends up having a bit of an accident on New Year's Eve. She's at the hotel with her friends. And apparently, you know, she notices that Dan is not around. She's wondering, where is Dan at? And believe it or not, those are her last words before she falls from the third floor. Uh... When Dan hears that literally she was asking where he was and that was her last words before she took the great fall, it affects him badly. It negatively affects him because he's like, wow, you know, she she noticed me. She was asking where I was. Whoa, she's in a coma. She's at the hospital. And what he does is like he visits her. He stays with her, you know, and... It's odd, it's odd because when he's there, her condition seems fair. She's calm as if, like, she knows he's there, his presence is there. Um, unfortunately, due to this, it also causes a negative impact with his friends. Because his friends are, um, his friends are looking after him. Because they understand how much of, like, the guilt and regret he feels. Because he feels like he caused it. You know, so they cover his shifts, you know, at the hotel. But the thing of it is, because he's not working at the hotel, you know, he's not, you know, he's losing money. He's not doing anything financially. He's not taking care of himself. Um, it later, you know, causes trouble at the hotel where he is terminated because he gets in a fight. Uh, the mother, uh, she, she, Yuli's mother sees this and goes, hey. Go. Take care of yourself. Get your life sorted. She's going to be fine. Go. You need to take care of yourself. You you can't be here. I appreciate you being here for my daughter. I understand. 
but go and take care of yourself. You need to have a job. You need to have money. Go. He does go. But as, you know, he does go, he ends up, you know, replying for a different hotel. He works there, but it doesn't seem to go for him very well because word gets out that um, Shi Yuli's condition gets worse. He rushes over there to make sure, you know, she's okay. And um, they seem to notice that when she, when he's there, Shirley's condition gets better. She starts to calm, you know, things like that. And eventually she does wake up from her coma and is discharged. So he still visits her and everything. But unfortunately she ends up dying because... She ends up having a seizure that causes a uh, her lung to collapse, unfortunately. And you know, prior to that, he takes her to a park where you know he does ask her, "What do you remember that night?" She does try and attempt to t say his name. You know, she tries to, but later on, she ends up dying of a seizure that causes a collapsed lung, and her family's in despair. Of course, they lost a daughter. You know. I know what that's like to lose someone is like, you, like, for example, my grandfather, my grandfather passed away after a long fight with cancer that I didn't know about. I knew he was sick, but I was never told to the extent I was never told that it was cancer. I was under the impression that it was more like a, a an infection, like a, like a respiratory infection, like pneumonia and, or bronchitis, because that's what I was told. Apparently, that's what, you know, he was having trouble breathing, and they thought that that was because of an infection, but due to the test, I guess they found out he was suffering from colon cancer. And uh, he you know, wasn't getting better. Uh, by the time I was told what was really going on, and I went to go and visit him, the day we went to visit him was the day he passed away. So, loss, you know, I know loss, I know mourning, because that was crazy for me. And it just goes to show life was short. At the same time, I was going through stuff. And, and you know, when he passed away, it sort of gave me a kind of new perspective. Like, a lot of questions that I had were answered, you know. I won't go into what the details were, but let's just say I had a unhealthy yet very um, overwhelming sort of um, dismay with death. You know, no, I was not an emo person. It was just I was told about something within religion that it made me like question everything. It made me scared to die. Like, I don't want to die. I don't want, you know, I was afraid, you know. But when he passed away, and I guess I felt like where he was going, you know, that I was going to see him again, and it, you know, I it took a lot of, you know, everything that I learned that led up to that moment sort of now was like making sense, you know. And it was with that. Everything started to now make sense to him, you know. And how it made sense was not only of death of Shiuli, but also... um. She was called Shiuli because of a flower. She loved the flower. But also the mother tells him because the mother, the family, her family was about to leave. Was going to leave and move, but didn't want to leave a flower behind because it reminded her of her daughter who they named after Shiuli. And the thing of it is about the Shiuli flower, it lives all night, but dies at dawn. And she didn't want to leave because it was like short lived. My daughter's life was short-lived. You know, in other words, life is too short, but enjoy it because it can go. It can go. So take care of yourself. Put some meaning in your life. Yes, life is short, but have a sense of direction. Put some meaning in your life. You know, several months later, he does get a new job. He gets rehired at the hotel. He completes his diploma, and he aspires to be a sous chef. And in the meantime, he does promise the mother that he will take care of the plant. In an unconventional and unconditional way that he 
looked after Shioli, he was going to do the same thing for this flower. You know? So that's what the movie was about. You know, the life and death, how, you know, everything can change in an instant. You know, and when everything changes in an instant, how are you going to react? You know, how are you going to go about it? Because, you know, he felt guilty. He felt regret. He was like, wow, I'm the cause. And he's not. He wasn't the cause. It happened. But he feels like that, you know. And that's what this movie was about. Guilt, regret, loss, death, happiness, love, unconventional love, un <laughs> un uh, unconventional, unconditional love. Because he started to fall in love with her, you know, not while she was, you know, alert, while she was, like, you know, alive, aware, you know, conscious. He started to fall in love with her. But no, I don't think it's, like, in a romantic way. It's more like who she is because she was such a caring person. She was so kind, you know. She had her head on her shoulders, feet on the ground. And I'm not saying he was a bad guy. It was just, like, this... She gave him, in an unconventional way, a sense of direction. And that's what this movie is about. You, you know, the thing of it is, when I watch movies, I watch... If, if I like the film, I'll watch the movie a first time. You know, just to have a, con a feel for the story. Then I'll watch it a second time to see if I missed anything. And then I will watch it a third time to really get what, you know, the hidden Easter eggs or, like, the hidden, you know, lessons... Sometimes it's a hit and a miss for me. Other times it's not. This one, it was more like in an unconventional and unconditional way to love. It helped him see. It helped him wake up. And because of this, he got rehired at the hotel. You know, hey, I got to live too. I got to, you know, I need to get a sense of direction too. You know, I will keep my promise, but you know what? I got to take care of me too. You know, he got his diploma. He's starting to be a sous chef. He's doing it. You know, so I really did like this movie. Yes, it was sad, but I, but seeing how he was growing from it, you know, seeing that he, you can't be irresponsible. You can't just think that, you know, you can't think that everything's smooth sailing and just like, just sort of like go through it and not live. You know, so, um, it was a good movie. I did enjoy it. And, uh. Panette, thank you for uh, uh, requesting this, suggesting that I watched it. I really do uh, like it, and uh, and and it's true. Like this, I, to me, this movie was more like the message was more um, not in your face, but it was there. It was obvious. At the, I like these kinds of movies where you're growing with the character. And not only are you growing with the character, you can relate to like, wow, I remember going through that, you know, and I did this, this, and this, you know, looking back at it, it wasn't the right way to go about it, but now I know, you know, and that's what he, you know, and that's what he did, you know, he had a lot of reflection and things like that, realizing he needs to, not like he was being lazy, lazy, it was just like, he didn't have a sense of direction. He was just going through life without, you know... Without any idea what to do, because he was a, he was irresponsible, and he wasn't taking anything that was on that was in, uh, in front of him seriously, and you know he probably thought, hey, whatever, but you know, take it seriously, but don't be uptight about it. You know, that's what that's what I took from the movie. That's what I took from the movie. I know other people may take other different stuff about it, but that's what I took from the movie. That is what I felt. That is what I saw. You know, that is what I feel what the movie looks like. That I feel what the direction of the movie was going. You know, this is my opinion. Simple as that. My opinion. Whether I like the story itself or not, or the symbolic of what the symbolism, what the story is trying to convey to you, this is my opinion. And my opinion is... This movie is about when you have loss, when you're going through regret, when you're going through guilt and guilt, it feels like you're going through hell. 
you feel like you, you know, if you didn't have a sense of direction, then you may not have a sense of direction now. But in this so-called hell, you sort of power on through it. And as you're going through what you're going through, you start to learn, you start to see, you start to, you know, oh, I get it now. I get it now. Oh, that answer. I finally got the answer. It sucks that I got it in the way that I did, but I got the answer. And that's what this movie was. He got his sort of like epiphany, you know, he sort of got, he sort of woke up, you know, with this unconventional and sad event. And with that, he grew up. And with that, he realized what he needed to do, you know, and that's what he did. You know. So, uh, Panette, thank you so much for requesting this movie for me to watch, October, folks. Um, if you want to watch it, great. If not, no biggie. <laughs> I'm not worried. But, uh, you know, uh, if you guys like this review and you guys enjoy this review, thank you so much. Um, uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and that you guys be safe out there.